Now let's work an example that uses our ideas of torque and angular acceleration to deduce something about a lever. We've all seen levers. It's a big long rod that you use to make it easier for you to lift something. And intuitively, we all know that the longer the lever arm uh, that you're pushing on compared to the, the, the lever arm where you're trying to move the weight, that makes your job easier. So let's imagine a person off here on the right exerting a force downward on a lever arm that's 10 feet long, trying to lift a 900 pound object across a lever arm that's one feet long. Question is, how much force would you need to use in order to keep lifting this thing at constant angular speed? Remember that constant angular speed means that the acceleration, the angular acceleration, will be zero. So when we think about uh, what is the net torque here, because net torque equals I times alpha, it must be that the net torque is also zero. Net means sum of all the torques that are acting on this mass. Well, it's important to remember that there's not just one. Gravity is exerting a torque because it, the gravitational force on this mass is pr pulling down right over here out at a distance of one foot away from the, the pivot point. So the torque from gravity is its uh, force, m times g, times the distance away, little d. There's a second torque, and that's from u. And you're exerting a force f, which we don't know yet, across a distance l, 10 feet. The sum of these two things have to cancel out because the sum of the torques has to equal zero. So it must be that the sum of the vector torques, which are going to be in opposite directions, which will equal i times alpha equals zero. To convince yourself that these two torques will cancel to zero, think about the fact that they actually do point in opposite directions. I'll give you a hint that if you do r cross f for the gravitational torque, that torque points out of the page, and the torque for u pushing straight down off on the right-hand side there, that torque points into the page. So even as vectors, they do point in the opposite direction and can cancel. Now we have to make their magnitudes cancel. We do that by setting them essentially equal to one another. We say that mgd minus f times l equals zero, or in other words, uh, if we move things around, we can find out what force has to be. Force has to equal mg times the ratio d over l. This is that key point that we talked about before, that if the weight of something is, you know, let's say 900 pounds, you don't have to push with a with an equal force in order to lift that object because of the ratio of d over l. In this case, d is one foot and l is 10 feet, and so you end up only having to pull downward with a force of 90 pounds, and that's why a lever works so well. Remember that pounds is a unit of force; it's a, a unit of weight for the English system, so that's why we're able to freely use it here instead of. Uh, worrying about mass times gene.